Hey everyone, this is Kristen coming to you again from Chronicles of a Christian Girl. I am delighted to be here to share with you once again and I'm especially excited today because the Lord told me it is time, it's time to release part two of your Esther fast experience with the Lord, hallelujah. And I was so excited beyond words to share this with you. It has been already one year that the Lord had me wait to share this with you. So I am happy today that now is the time and it is time to release it. Praise God, hallelujah. I'm always um, waiting on the Lord to do things in his time and a lot of the content that I share it is based upon the things that the Lord has shared in my heart to share with his people it may be for now for some it may be five years ten years two years two weeks two months that you may need to hear these words but God knows each time for each of his children and be sure you can be sure that he has an expected end for you. And even in God's word, it says that the thoughts that he thinks towards you, they are good and they are not of evil, hallelujah. So even when we go through the fiery trials, know that there is a purpose and there is a lesson in each storm for every one of us. And that God is making in us this man, this woman that he has created, right? And even as you think about the physical body, when we exercise, we have a particular outcome that we're looking for. And you have to put in the work, right? It is the same with the kingdom of heaven. You have to work. You have to exercise that muscle of faith. You have to exercise that muscle of listening into God's voice to know what he's saying to you today. You have to exercise practicing communion with God having a relationship with him right in order for that thing to become strong it must have a little workout right praise God so just before we jump in we're gonna just breathe up with a prayer we want to always acknowledge the Lord that is in our presence at all times right he may not we may not be able to see him with our physical eyes but we know that he is always there. He says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. And he's even closer than the very skin that is on our body. So we know that he is here. We just want to invite his presence. No, let him know that he is welcome, right? Because he is our friend. He's our Lord. He's our savior. He's our king. He's our confidant, right? He is our hallelujah provider. He is our keeper, our sustainer. At all times, whether you know it or you don't know it, God is the I am that I am for you at every instance in your life, right? Praise God. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Father God, we give you the glory. We give you the honor and we give you the praise. Hallelujah. Lord God, because, Father God, you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Father God, even from the beginning of time, you created us for such a time as this hallelujah and father god now now is the time hallelujah hallelujah for many of your children father god hallelujah praise god as they enter in these doors father god they may not know or they may know what you're doing father god i pray that you will keep them by your hallelujah by your right hand in the name of jesus holy spirit of god I invite you to have your way, Father God. Even in these words, Father God, I pray that you will minister to your children, Father God, in Jesus' name. Strengthen them, encourage them. Oh, hallelujah, Father God. Do what only you can do, Father God, for them, Father, in the name of Jesus. And Father God, we will not forget to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Oh, praise your name. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Hallelujah. We praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We praise the name of the Lord. <laughs> I'm a little bit teary-eyed. I, the presence of the Lord 
is so rich and so comforting, so satisfying. There is nothing like it in this world. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just want to lift up his name today. Right? We just want to lift up his name. Hallelujah. We give you the glory, God. We give you the glory. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for it. It is due unto your name. Hallelujah, God, for the great things that you have done, will do, and will continue to do even until the very end of time. You will do it, Father, and we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God. Praise the name of God. Hallelujah. So like you know, uh, or if you don't know, I like to jump right on in and share with you what happened on this experience praise god hallelujah so just so you know that my three-day estafas it was not just a typical three days i'm spending with the lord praise god there was a trip that it was involved that was involved in my three-day estafas right i had to go on a trip the Lord sent me on a trip. I had an assignment uh, during those days that I was fasting. Praise God. And this is what I want to share with you today. So very, <laughs> it's very interesting. And even as I was going over the content, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I went through this. I can't believe I went through this. And I know that there is no way it was me. I know that it was the Lord, 100%. Hallelujah, praise God, praise God, praise God. And I thank him because I know that I was never the same after that experience with him, praise God. I was never the same and I will never be the same again, praise God. So many of you who, who know me know that I have changed tremendously, right? I have changed. And I am proud to be a child of God. I am proud to be an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven. There is no shame, <laughs> praise God, because I have put in the work, right? I, I have put in the work to be where I'm at right now. And I know that there is a presence, there is an anointing that God will use this vessel to release to whoever will listen, right? The Lord will release into your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. As we obey, as we commit our lives to his hands, there is nothing impossible. Only follow him. Just as Jesus followed him, he came to do the will of the Father. And so too, we must do the will of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So I'm going to start. So I don't know if you guys have watched my first video. You may or you may not have. Uh, this is part two. So I had explained in my first video that there was a two-week period in which the Lord prepared me to go on this three-day fast. I did not have food or water during that time. The Lord told me to go on this fast, right? He explained to me was, his explanation was that, Kristen, there has been an elevation in the kingdom of darkness that is coming against your life. And he said, now I want you to also elevate, to go to a higher level in me. And that is, that in, in that doing, in doing that, you would be able to counteract what the enemy is coming up against you to do. Right? So... Praise God. So during that two weeks, I was supposed to have no refined sugar, right? No candy, no sweets, you know, Skittles, M&Ms, um, bread, anything that had refined sugar. And I, I never really took notice of how much refined sugar we really intake, which is really not good for us. Um, but there was... A lot of things that the Lord during that two weeks he would not allow me to have um, and if 
I was in a predicament where I couldn't get something because of course I'm working at the same time I have to have food um, he would tell me what I could have and what I couldn't have right so during that time he would explain to me no have this no don't have that right and I would have to abide by what he would say of course I wanted to just do everything that he wanted me to do during that two week period he began to speak to me uh, through the different ways that he speaks to me and that is something that I have learned that is something that I have exercised and I have put into practice in order to know right you can't just know God is speaking to you and you should not only um, focus on prophetic words right you want to hear from God for yourself you want to know that he's speaking to you and you have to practice it's something that you practice with him right it's just like you have a relationship with your co-worker or with your boss or with or with your family with your friends you take time to know that person you spend time with them right um you you, you go on dates with them you go on outings with them you can do these things with the lord and yourself go for a walk and just begin to speak to the lord right you can do these things and it is a relationship so it's not something to be rushed it's not something that is going to happen overnight you have to take your time slow down and allow him to show you right ask the questions speak to him and allow him to respond sometimes his response doesn't come right away Sometimes it takes a few days. Sometimes it's instantly. Sometimes it takes a few years for God to answer a particular question. And I have experienced that, right? Um, I've, I've experienced where I've had dreams I did not understand. And now the Lord is explaining to me what those dreams meant. There is a time and a season for everything. So just wait on him and be okay with waiting. You have to be okay with waiting. You have to be with, okay with him not responding right away. And just be content with that, that you know that God is going to answer. Be content with your waiting. Be content with everything that God is doing, right? Even in the book of James, I remember the scripture that the Lord used. That caused me to really just, really settle where I was and just wait, right? In the book of James, um, it says, praise God. I, would, I know it was James chapter 1. Be Praise God. Let me just find it really quickly. James chapter 1. I have to say the scripture. James chapter 1 verses 1 and 2. Verses 2 and th 3 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith will get patience. But let patience have a perfect work. Right? That you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing and let me tell you when i first saw that scripture i it just shocked me first of all and then secondly i realized that i was being hasty with god and it just caused me to just i don't know like i just relaxed i relaxed in that into that position that i was in and i was just okay lord i'm okay with waiting let me be patient so that I can be perfect, so that I could be entire and wanting nothing. And truly, I feel like I am in that place. I, Lord, whether it's good or bad, I'm okay with it. Lord, whether it's up or down, I'm okay with it because I want to be entire. I want to be whole. I want to be in that place where I'm wanting of nothing. And this world doesn't have a hold on me, right? God wants to have that better hold on you, right? And that he would take you to the different experiences to show you himself and to prove himself to you. So, hallelujah. So during this two week period, I he began to speak to me. He said, Kristen, no phone. I don't want you to have any phone contact. I don't want you to, you're not gonna be able to speak to your friends, your family, right? So on this trip, you're not gonna have no phone contact. I don't want you using your phone, right? So I couldn't say, also I couldn't say when I was leaving right i couldn't tell anyone specifically when i was leaving and when i was coming back 
right? I just had a, a gauge of, okay, it might be like about a week, right? Um, at first, I actually did not know where I was going, but as the time went on, he began to speak to me on where he wanted me to go and how he wanted me to get there, right? Um, so the, everything was literally planned out by the Holy Spirit, and he just start, began to prompt me in my spirit in which in the order in which he wanted things to be done. Um, there was different ways that he would bring these messages to me. Like I said before, um, God would speak to me um, in dreams. He would speak to me. Um, at the time, I wasn't very clear on the visions, but now I'm really beginning to see visions and understand almost immediately what God is saying. Um, but mostly like through street signs and um, uh, through numbers, sometimes he would give me numbers and then he would give me um, script that uh, book in the Bible that I need to go and visit. Um, but I would always wait on him, right? I would always try to confirm what he was saying so that I was sure on what he wanted me to do. All right? So, and then he also had, he led me to speak to specific people. He chose these people for me to speak to about my fast and he also he told me so if you're listening and you were one of those people he told me that he was going to give them a special blessing right um for doing this um for those of you who did do this fast prayed for me on this fast god has a special blessing for you and i don't know what it is he's he has the blessing for you if you obeyed and did what he um asked you to do right so he had me to reach out to a couple people. I can't remember how many. I know my pastor was one of them. I told him about my fast. And there were some women in my lives, uh, sisters in Christ, my physical sisters, and also I think a God sister, my mom, and a few other people. And he told me, he said, let them know about your fast. Let them know how, how long you're going to go for. And then he told me, since I couldn't tell them when I was going, just let them know on the day that I am leaving, I'm going to text you a word that says now. And when I say that word now, when I text that word now, um, you're going to know that I just left and my phone will be off. I will not be able to contact you and you will not be able to contact me. But that will prompt you to know that I have started and now you need to pray for me, right? Um, so these people were aware of what I was going to do. Um, they were aware that I was about to embark on a three-day Esther fast, no food, no water, and I was going somewhere, right? Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, praise God. At the time, also, I was working. This family that I was working with, I'm a nanny. So this family that I was working with, it was a short-term job. They were going on vacation and i was also going to have vacation time so this was perfect i said lord i'm going to give you my first three days of my fast this was my thought and then the rest i would probably relax um but <laughs> everything in god's hands right so at this time because it was a short-term job i also had a friend of mine that uh, we you know co-workers she was having a transition and she was like i really would like you to interview for the job that i'm about to leave and because i knew the child and he was a familiar with me she thought i would be a great fit right um i wasn't sure if i wanted to she kept asking me and i wasn't sure so i didn't want to give a response because i know i was doing these things with the lord and i knew that something was coming right after um after my my experience with god i knew that god had something in store i knew that the breakthrough was on its way so i didn't want to give a response and i kept asking the lord what do you think should i go and eventually during, uh, during this two-week period i went on this job interview and uh, at the end of the interview they told me okay we'll give you a call uh no we need you to call us um during my fast period where i was not allowed to be on my phone so i told them okay and then i knew in my heart i would not be able to contact them so i said well maybe it wasn't for me right 
Um, so I left that alone. I, I actually thought <laughs> the job wasn't for me, right? And I was willing to give up that job because I knew that God had something in store for me, right? Praise God. I wrote letters to my kids explaining to my explaining myself and what my sudden disappearance was um, was about um, and it's something that I have never done I can I have never just left my kids and not saying where I was going didn't know when I was coming back and I've just never done something like that so it was very big for me um, but the Lord gave me peace he gave me assurance that he would take care of them and everything would be okay and that I needed to go right so the Lord to these different ways he speaks to me he explained and <laughs> it was it was a challenge because you know I'm, I'm a bit nervous about the whole not eating for three days not drinking water for three days you know people die like this um, I even had someone say to me, um, no, we don't fast without, um, without drinking water because Jesus didn't do that. And while he was speaking to me about it, um, I heard in my spirit, the Holy Spirit said to me, all right, this is why it's important to listen to the Holy Spirit. He said to me, what Esther experienced was supernatural. I enabled her to do it, right? I enabled her to fast those three days and three nights without food and water by my spirit. So honestly, the request of what God was asking me to do was very odd to me. I was like, okay, this is weird. But I arose to the challenge and I accomplished the task and I am grateful to God that I did it, right? Praise God. Okay, so the weekend before my fast, right? Just before my fast, the Lord gave me all the instructions. He told me that he wanted me to fast from refined sugars and foods. And then the weekend of my fast, he told me, okay, now on the weekend, which was a Saturday and the Sunday before my fast, before the day I was, uh, before, yeah, before I was supposed to start my fast, which was the Monday, um, he wanted me to have edos, plantains, ground provisions, um, things that was grown from the ground. Um, so what I did, I did yam, I think edos, green banana, plantain, right? Those were the things that I had. Um, I boiled them and I put them in containers and that was something that I walked with because I wasn't going to start my fast, not until sun, uh, Monday morning. All right. Um, I was totally nervous. <laughs> Because now I'm feeling like, oh my God, what if it's, this is not God? What if this is myself speaking to myself? And I was like, no, Kristen, all these instructions, I don't think so. The Lord literally planned this whole thing out. Um, so, but I was still looking for confirmation, right? I was still looking for confirmation, praise God, from God, right? I was looking for him to explain not explain, but just to, I wanted something more, right? So the Sunday morning, and even though I wanted something more, I was still going through with the process, right? Whatever he told me to do, I was just, right? Um, so Sunday morning, I get up, <laughs> I get ready for church. And while I'm getting ready for church, I'm like really nervous in myself, you know, just going over in my heart. Okay, I know this is Sunday. This is the day that I'm leaving. Nobody else knew what I knew and I wasn't coming back home that day. And I, it was a little bit nerve wracking. So while I was thinking over these in my thoughts, I saw a live came up on Facebook and it was this pastor from Trinidad. His name is Apostle Mundy. And he literally said, we need to, um, we need to arise to the occasion. And I just paraphrasing what I heard in my spirit. We need to arise to the occasion. I am going on a three day uh, fast, no food, no water. And I want to know who is with me. We need to fast. We need to, we need to, you know, get God, um, not get God, but we need to 
break these things in our lives, right? The enemy's hold and, and, and his attacks, right? And all these different things he was saying, he was basically telling us to rise to the occasion, to fast. And when I heard those words, it was complete confirmation. Kristen, I am calling you to this. You're not the only one, right? So I was so grateful for that confirmation. And I went right on in. I left home confident, knowing that, okay, this was God, and I'm ready, I'm going to do this, I'm going to embark on this journey, and I was excited, right? I was all dressed up. Um, I had these, I remember I had these soft pants. I was so, I was, I was feeling myself, y'all. Um, I... <laughs> laughing at myself i had these wedges they were so cute they were heels i don't know why i did that um i had these soft pants i had a nice blouse and i had a jeans jacket right and then i had this hat i love that hat so much praise god and i had this this straw hat i was like you know the sun might be in my face so i'm gonna have a hat to wear right and you know i was really excited very happy you know, to embark on this journey with God. Now, halfway through the service, the Lord said to me, okay, it's time to go. Leave now, right? And I left. So I walked up the street uh, to, there's a train called the LIR, LIRR, the Long Island Railroad. I took that train to Atlantic Avenue. For those of you that are in New York, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. Um, and then I took another train to 42nd Street where it's Port Authority. This is where like buses leave and they come from different states, right? So I was totally <laughs> excited. I was beaming. Um, I think I was a little bit clueless too as to what I was getting into, you know, naive, innocent, childlike, right? because the things that was coming next <laughs> I was not prepared for them okay so I left and honestly when I left it was cloudy like the, the looked like the rain had set up to fall and I didn't even pay much mind to it I was just on my way like I say childlike right and I got to 42nd street by this time it's pouring right rain is pouring and uh, it's pouring so much that it's actually flooding. The streets are flooding, right? And uh, let me tell you, when I left here, there was no rain. It was clouds, gray. It was a gloomy day, but there was no rain, right? When I got to 40, 42nd Street Port Authority, there was flooding, right? And uh, it was so funny because I got off the train, I went to the ticket counter and I was like, okay, I need a ticket to go to this uh, destination. And the lady's like, okay, but we don't have any buses leaving right now. Um, there's gonna be a bus that leaves tomorrow. And I said, um, I can't leave tomorrow. I have to leave today. The Lord told me to leave today. I said, okay, let me check somewhere else. And as I went down the line checking everywhere else, all the buses, all the buses were not leaving those that had to leave had already gone and some of them were delayed some of them were not leaving at all right because of the storm that was apparently brewing that i had no idea and you guys could search this up august 22nd 2021 there was a tropical storm henry right that's tropical storm henry that caused flooding it caused so much trouble and basically stopped all the buses from moving, right? So now I say to God, Lord, I told you to me, you want me to leave, you know? And while I was like speaking to the Lord, I was a little bit discouraged to be honest. Um, this guy, I was asking someone else and this guy, he said, oh, you can go to 34th Street um, at West End, you would find mega bus. Mega bus is still leaving. They have buses leaving still. If you go there, you probably get a bus, right? So now I'm like trying to get an umbrella because it's pouring outside. And um, I think I got a 
cab to take me to the location. I may have stopped short to check something with the and bank. I remember having to walk from the bank to... I didn't get through with the bank. Something, my card wasn't working. And I left from the bank and I walked the rest of the way. I think it was like about two blocks, two or three blocks from where I, I needed to go. When I got... <laughs> When I got to this destination, um, this, um, not destination, this bus stop, there were lines and lines of people. I guess everybody went down to that location to get a bus to leave, right? Um, there was so much people. One thing I forgot to add um, during my two week Esther fast was that the Lord also had me to take all the cash that I had and to buy a prepaid gift card. So I would make all my purchases with this prepaid gift card, right? And because I couldn't use my phone, I, I couldn't use my credit cards, right? Um, and this is how this is how he wanted it done. So I get to uh, 34th Street, the rain is pouring. And I tell you, the amber that I have is not helping. The streets are flooded. Everywhere is wet. And I am there with my bags <laughs> of provision. And praise God. Hallelujah. I think I had another small bag. Um, nothing big. Praise God. Um, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right, so the rain was pouring and I remember like my feet, my, my pants being wet. I think my jacket was getting wet. Um, and I remember my wedges was wet because when I was walking, it was like squeak, squeak, squeak. It was like really squeaky. <laughs> so now with all these people, I had to wait, um, to wait until everybody got on the bus not knowing if I was going to get a seat. And, you know, I just had to wait in faith. God, if you said that I'm going, you're going to get me on this bus. And sure enough, I was able to get on the bus. Um, I made the purchase with my prepaid card, and I was able to get on to the bus. I think me and one other person. The bus was totally full. Um, but I'm grateful that I was able to get on while i was standing in the line that nice hat that i <laughs> that i loved so much i'll be honest with you i think someone stole that hat right off the top of my head and because there was just so much going on with the wind and the rain i didn't feel it but i remember seeing this young lady she was standing like close to me but um she kept watching me like really intently and she came close to me and then she had like one bag she I, I I don't know why but I felt that she stole my hat and she because she put her bag in the compartment where you pack your luggage and it was just a book bag so I was like I thought that was strange and then when I was looking for my hat I did like this no hat on my head I looked around to see if the wind blew it off it was no way around and I was like okay no way if the wind blew my hat off, it wouldn't be like on the ground or blowing down the street, right? Because the winds was really strong. I really felt that she took it. And the Lord, you know, I I just left it alone because at the end of the day, I realized that the enemy was really trying to get me discouraged. And I was like, okay, let me just leave that, leave that hat thing right there, right? So... This bus that I took was going to Washington, D.C., right? And from there, I would transfer to another bus that would take me to where I was going. Or, yeah, would take me to another station to take me to where I was going, right? You know, even while I was in the line, I, I realized that I couldn't even use my phone to purchase a ticket which didn't matter in the end because I still got my seat, right? I really don't think I understood how much warfare I was coming into by embarking on this journey with the Lord for Jesus. 
right? And, you know, just to say, and I've, I've said this um, uh, numerous times to friends and family, whenever the Lord speaks to you, whenever the Lord gives you a word or an instruction, know that that is the place in which you will get the most warfare. You're not going to get the most distractions, the most everything pulling you away from that because the enemy does not want you to fulfill, to fulfill what God is telling you because he knows that whatever you fulfill for God, there is a reward at the end of it, right? So know that when God speaks to you, you would know that it's his word that has spoken, that he really did speak to you when the enemy is attacking you. If you, you feel that the Lord spoke to you and there is no opposition, I would check again with God, right? I would check again with God to make sure it was him because the enemy will attack what God is saying to you to do, right? I know that's, that is for somebody. Whatever he's telling you to do, the enemy will attack it and he will attack it fiercely. He would not give you the opportunity to breathe Right? He attacks very fiercely. Right? So, I took this bus to, D to D.C. Right? When I got to D.C. Sunday night. Because <laughs> it takes like about four to five hours or so to get there. Um, I got there Sunday night. I went to the, to the desk. I was like, okay, I'm going to this location. And she was like, okay, you can buy your ticket. Um, you can definitely get your ticket now, but I'm letting you know that all the buses has been delayed, right? Everything is in a mess because of this storm, Storm Henry, and all the buses has been delayed, haven't been able to leave from where their locations to get to where they're going to connect people to different places. So everything is in a mess, right? So, okay, I am um, wet. Having sat on a bus for five hours, still wet in the AC because I got wet in the rain. Get to those locations, still wet. Um, my feet is wet. I'm uncomfortable, of course. But, <laughs> and by this time, I'm a little bit like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I go to the bathroom, you know, you make the best of every situation. So I try to dry my clothes off with the hairdryer. <laughs> that didn't work so much you know I freshened up you know at this time you know you're different so you try to brush your teeth you just try to you know I think I had went bought stuff just to reach I was able to brush my teeth as so I realized I wasn't be able I wouldn't be able to leave soon um so I brushed my teeth and then and then I went to sit down right by this time, I'm still munching on, like, the provisions. Um, just preparing myself because I know one Sunday morning, 6 a.m. reaches, no food, no water, right? So, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. So, um, I was told that the bus may not come for another seven to eight hours, um, uh, a lot of customers were stranded in different places because of the delays and it was just everybody being affected not just me right so now it's like um, I have to wait luckily where I was the facility was nice um, the, there was a lot of police there and they did not allow um people that didn't have tickets to linger around right um there was a sitting area where we can sit there was tv which i really wasn't watching tv because of course i'm fast i'm about to fast i don't want to like feed my spirit with too many things right um i was so tired at this time because of all the things i had to go through i think i was even more tired because i was wearing heels doing all of these things and uh, praise God, I could not sleep, right? I couldn't sleep and I didn't want to sleep because I didn't feel safe, right? I didn't feel safe. I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't know who was around me because there were other people there. Um, 
and I just didn't feel safe. So I didn't sleep, right? I probably dozed a little bit, maybe here and there, but I couldn't fall asleep. And the bus came, I think like 2 a.m. So like I was there for like about seven to eight hours. I left DC mid-morning and I was tired. I got some rest on the bus. Uh, finally the bus um, you know I was on my way because now finally the bus is here and we were on our way I was on my way um, to my destination my fast and this is the interesting part my fast has had an assignment attached to it I was determined to finish it and I really wasn't ready for all that happened but God was with me the bus drove all morning right and then I get to Virginia and there was another layover um, the buses came like a couple hours later right so at this time I'm in Virginia and the facilities there was so filthy I am sorry to say Virginia needs a facelift um, it was really sad to see um, that this is how it was and you know you're stopping in between places and it was so filthy so deplorable I'm sorry and uh, there were other like there was a lot of homeless people there which you know if you have nowhere to go you know okay you have nowhere to go but praise God, it was not it was not the best condition. So I was really disappointed. Of course, and when you're fasting, even worse, you want things to be in order, you want things to be clean, you know, so that you can really spend that time with God. But again, you have to make the best of every situation and do what you can. So I use the bathroom <laughs> quickly. Again, freshen up, brush my teeth, wash my face. Um, which was something that I would do, you know, like in the Bible, it says, wash your face and anoint your head and don't appear unto men as if you are fasting. Right. So this is what I would apply. I love to worship. So I began to worship and praise the Lord. It was the beginning of my fast. It was such a beautiful sunrise coming up from the East. It was so big and so beautiful. I just felt like God was speaking to me in that sunrise you know like this is the dawning of a new day you know praise god now it begins you know so i went through uh the couple hours sitting trying to relax uh, ever so often i would get up walk outside get some fresh air just look around you know you're in a different place um and then i would go back and sit down try to relax because when you're fasting you want to rest as much as possible because your body is now going to begin to get weak now I haven't um I haven't eaten I was just eating the provision so it's not like a lot of meat and some of these things they go through your body really quickly so by I think by the end of Monday my body was probably already like really weak you know and then even more so because i'm moving up and down going on buses coming off buses right so we were driving by this time i'm weak i'm already weak starting to get weak right going on and off of buses like i said just now i even had to going on and off of buses having to watch other people eat going <laughs> getting their food and come you know but really just turning aside because I'm I am so focused on praise God on getting this task done for the Lord I'm so focused on getting this task done right so I was sure not to sit in the Sun um, one of the things that I felt was really good was that the buses had AC so I wasn't hot right and not sitting in the sun to dehydrate my body even more so i kept away from the sun and i most of the times would just 
worship and praise the Lord, right? I was sure to sit, <clears throat> I was sure to walk slow, very slow, um, because at this time I was, I was getting more weak. And guess with all the moving around, yes, I would sleep as much as I could, you know, rest my body as much as I could and all often be, worship the Lord often just give him praise let him know that Lord I'm doing this for you this is what you asked me to do and I I, I, I want to do it to the best of my ability right my heart was just really focused and fixed on God um, so I get to another location so from Virginia I took another bus and that bus took me to i think it's north carolina um by this time it is still is it still monday praise god yeah by this time it's still monday right um and i get to north carolina so in north carolina <laughs> the bathrooms are so clean of course I am looking at that because that's where I need to be to make sure I'm, you know, keeping my body together. Remember, I left Sunday and I'm on a trip. Because of the storm, everything is delayed. So something that should take a couple hours is now taking a day and even up to three days, right, to get to this location that the Lord sent me. So, <laughs> praise God. So I get to Carolina, North Carolina. I think it was North Carolina. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think it was North Carolina. Um, I go to the bathroom and at this time, because I'm fasting, I don't want to wash my face for water to go in my mouth. So the Lord, the Holy Spirit said to me, wet the top of your head, right? So I took the water and I began to sap my head, right? And you would not believe that just ref me like I felt like I woke up right so I freshened up again brushed my teeth just you know doing my personal hygiene to make sure that I'm okay because by this time it's a whole day right and I'm not able to take a shower so I want to make sure that I'm clean and of course I'm doing all that I need to do you know you stretch yourself you walk around you look at the surrounding areas and you know just watch it because i've never been to some of these places so it was exciting to see as well so while i'm waiting another wait a couple hours i heard them call for a bus and i was like okay maybe that's my bus so i run out i went out join the line and when i got to the the bus ticketer which is the, the bus driver is doing the ticket she scanned my ticket and it, it gave a sound, right? I, I don't know. I felt like I saw an X and I was about to turn around and she's like, no, get on the bus. I was like, you sure? She was like, yeah, get on the bus. I was like, okay, maybe I'll get to where I'm going faster. <laughs> maybe I'll get to where I'm going faster since she's telling me to get on the bus, right? So I am happy. I got on the bus, happy, and I'm looking at all the surrounding areas really beautiful places right and <laughs> had I known that this would would have been a trap of the enemy <laughs> I would not have gotten on that bus but God would allow you right so guys I was happy you know I was great to be like serving the Lord in this capacity doing his will but what come next <laughs> was devastating and so the bus makes like another four or five stops which is another couple hours right and then he's making she's making stops in between but then she gets to the stop right and i don't get the walk off the bus because i don't need to buy food i don't need to buy drink um but at this bus particular bus stop i wasn't going to get off and then i decided to get off at the last moment and go use the bathroom right so for those um and honestly getting off the bus to to use the bathroom so i 
night so i go in so yeah so i go in to this rest stop and this rest stop is it have everything if you see this rest stop i think it will be somewhere in south south carolina and this bus stop had a mcdonald's they had all kinds of foods hot dogs drinks they had like clothes and car supplies and they had everything it was like a major gas station stop there was big trucks um small cars there was all sorts of stuff moving in and out of that out of that area there was um showers you could take a shower there you can pay for it and boy <laughs> that was something else Anyway, so I went to the bathroom, used the bathroom, and guess what? When I came outside, there was no bus. The bus driver left me in South Carolina, and I immediately ran back inside because I do not even know where I am. <laughs> and I said to the cashier, oh my God, the bus left me. What am I going to do? So they told me, okay, call the bus company and let them know. So I called the bus company and they're like, okay, what's your bus ticket number? So I gave them my bus ticket number and they're like, we can't find you in the system. Now, it, now my mind is like ticking on, wow. She scanned my ticket, it gave an X and she left me because I wasn't supposed to be on her bus and now they, they don't know why I'm where I am because I'm not supposed to be there. It's not in my line of journey. <sighs> so <laughs> I call once, I called twice. No one was able to help me. And the lady at the cash register was a guy. He said to me, okay, there's usually another bus coming at this time, just wait, you know? So I sat down and I waited. There was chairs, tables, I tell you, they had a lot of stuff there. Um, so, we had chairs and tables. I think I left on the bus my charger. So I didn't have a charger, I wound up having to buy one. And, because my phone was dying. Oh no, later I had to turn my phone on, let me tell you. So I sat there, couple hours passed. I mean, like this was, this was Monday evening going into the night because it quickly became dark, right? And no personnel from, I think it was Greyhound Bus, was able to help me, right? Because my ticket was reading in a place that had no locations, no bus stops. And it didn't make sense why I was where I am. And probably they thought it was fraud. So the guy told me, just wait for the other bus. Not even thinking, hey, <laughs> everything is delayed. You may not get a bus. I didn't think about that. But I sat there and I waited. Put my head down and I tried to relax and try not to think about all this food that is around me, right? I knew it was a trap from the enemy, right? There was people approaching me trying to, oh, do you need something to eat? Do you want something to drink? And I was like, no, thank you, but thank you so much. You know, I even really wanted to take a shower. Um, but the money that I had was specific to what I needed to do. So I couldn't like spend outside of that, right? Um, so, praise God, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So I called... I waited. I just waited for a few hours. More hours, more hours. No buses came. <laughs> and let me tell you, I began to get very angry. I got so, so angry. And uh, praise God. Hallelujah. I was mad at God. I was like, God, what is going on? You tell me this is what you want me to do. Look at me. I'm stranded. I don't even know what to do. I'm not from here. Nobody's going to help me. I don't know what... And I began to get so angry, really, really angry, right? So somewhere between 11, 11 p.m., because this is how long I'm waiting. And I was so grateful to the clerks. They were so accommodating for me. They told me where to sit. They told me what I could do. Um, 
but honestly <laughs> i i was really beginning to feel like a, a homeless person you know like when you go to the gas station there's people begging um it was it was difficult um i was really really upset with god and while i was sitting there you know i was like you know what i can't call home i can't contact anyone but the lord didn't say i couldn't um go up on youtube because by this time i'm so discouraged so I go to YouTube, I turn on my phone and I go to YouTube and I, I began, I saw a word that came through from Lana Vosa. I have to go back and see if I find that word. And essentially what she was saying was that, and I knew it was God speaking to me, if you don't accomplish this task, there are things that will die that was never supposed to die. Um, and it would die basically he was telling me it would die that promise that purpose will die right so i was like oh my god i need to get to where i'm going and then there was another woman i think was from godford ministries um i think she's nigerian i she the lord also used her to encourage me and you know in her words i realized that i was wrong for being angry and you know i just began to ask the lord to forgive me um for being angry forgive me for everything anything that i have done wrong um you know and i begin to pour my heart out let me tell you I began to pour my heart out. Let me tell you, I cried, you know, sitting there. I just began to cry and just, you know, really ask the Lord to forgive me honestly and forgive me for anything that I, I, I've done wrong, anything that I'm doing wrong, you know, because of her words. I can't remember ex, ex, ex particularly what she was saying, but I felt conviction and I asked the Lord to forgive me praise God and let me tell you right after I did that <laughs> it was like this load just lifted and I it, it was almost as if I just knew what to do so I got up I went to the counter and I, I said to her listen I need these slippers I bought some flip-flops took my heels off and because I knew that I needed to get this done right God was speaking to me. Um, I could not um, allow what was happening to get me down. Right? And let me tell you, <laughs> people, oh my God, the amount of people that offered to buy me food and buy me drinks, I knew that the enemy was trying to get me to forfeit what I was doing, right? Um, so I bought these slippers and then the Lord told me, call back the bus company and ask them, where could I get a bus? And when I called, I tried to, ex I didn't explain what happened to me. I said to them, listen, I am here in this location. Could you tell me where could I find a bus, another bus stop, not company, another bus stop that I can get a bus? And she told me, okay, it's uh, at this place. So now I took my Google Maps, searched the place. It was like 20 minutes from where I was. It's like, okay, good. So now the bus wasn't, at this time it was like about 12 at night, maybe 12, 1230 at that time. Um, so I took the address down. They told me that the bus is gonna get there like 7.30, between 7.30 and eight o'clock. I knew I had to get there for eight. I bought the flip-flops, I got a charger, charged my phone, right? And I proceeded to go back to my seat. I sat down, I put my head down and I tried to sleep. And I rested, right? Because 
I kept waking up in between because of course you're not comfortable. People walking in and out, who's watching you, who's trying to offer you stuff. But I get some rest in between. Um, and I wake up like around six o'clock, right? And at this time when I woke up, I was like trying to help myself get a ride to get to this location. The police said that they couldn't help me. Uh, truck drivers, people coming in the gas station were not able to help me. They were like shunning me because maybe they thought I was trying to sell myself. I don't know. Um, usually that's the stuff that you see around those areas and I'm a woman so you know I understood so I was like okay Lord I stood at the door and I said to the Holy Spirit I said Lord let whoever is to take me to my location let them ask me if I need a ride and I stood there and I was watching and I'm just continuous in prayer now I'm like really praying you know that God will make a way for me to get to where I'm going and so I'm looking at everyone people who I thought would talk to me <laughs> didn't talk to me and I saw this guy but I didn't pay him much mind it was a Caucasian guy with tattoos all over him and I didn't pay him much mind and he walked in past me he walked back out he went to his car he came back the second time he came back he watched me and he said um, you need a ride like hey there's an accent right so I try to <laughs> it's like you know he's like you need a lift you need a lift so I was like what he's like you need a lift I was like what he was like do you need a lift I was like yes yes I need a lift at this time in my pocket I had $12 I think only cash that I had on me was $12. I can't remember. I had cash and I had the prepaid card, right? And that $12, yeah, I had $12. I can't remember how, I probably took it off the gift card, but I can't remember how, how I wound up with $12. Anyway, I had $12. That's all the cash I had. And of course, a lift I can't use my phone to order a cab, so I couldn't do it that way. But the guy said to me, do you need a lift? So I was like, yes, yes, I need a lift. And he came to me. Listen, this guy was a Caucasian guy, tattoos all over. I was a little bit skeptical, but the fact that he asked me, I knew it was God. And he had, I think, like a lazy eye. And he was driving for Lyft. Perfect. So I got in a car and I was like, listen, how much is it going to cost me to get to X, Y, and Z? And he said, $12. Could you imagine? He said, $12. I knew that was God, right? So I was like, okay, great, let's go. So this was like somewhere after six minutes or seven, right? So we're driving, the sun is coming up. This is Tuesday morning. <laughs> We're driving, the sun is coming up, and he's driving on the road, and he begins to tell me, you know, he's working with this place, and they're not even giving him uh, a promotion. He wants a promotion. We begin to talk. You know, I was listening to his conversation, and I asked him, like, what is your name? And he said to me, my name is Michael. So <laughs> when he said that to me, I was like, Michael, <laughs> immediately I felt in my heart, in my spirit, in my spirit, I was like, why do I feel like this is an angel? And I felt that so heavy, even to, to this moment, I felt so heavily that that was an angel. So we get to this location and I run in the gas station. The funny thing is that this guy did not leave when I got there, the gas station manager said, no, it's not here. It's further down the road. You passed it. So I came back out. I said, Michael, oh my gosh. He said, it's down the road. Could you take me? Could you take me? I don't have any more money. He's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I, you know, I, I, it's okay. We're, we're nice people down here. You know, like he was really, he was so nice. And he took me to the, the other gas, back to the location we passed. 
and sure enough there was a bus stop right on the side of this gas station it was a, sh a small like uh gas station um but they had one bench i think on the side of the establishment that you can sit there and wait on the bus it was not covered there was no bathrooms there was no facilities there they had like fruits and uh, food and snacks inside but it was very small and the guy inside also sold bus tickets right so when i got there michael was like oh my gosh there's a guy there you're not gonna be alone you know you can sit with him and wait for the bus you guys could wait together and i was like oh yeah that's so nice i was like thank you so much and even to this moment i just still feel in my spirit that even though he seemed so like a person i felt very deeply in my spirit that that was an angel right i feel even to this day that was an angel and it was the angel of my club that was aiding me in getting to where i was going right so know for sure if god has given you an instruction he will make sure right to get you to where you need to be to fulfill that purpose you have a part and god has a part praise god hallelujah so i got there and there was a guy sitting there there was a guy sitting there and it was an african-american guy and he seemed to be from uh south carolina as well he had the accent and everything so we sat there he was like oh you got in the bus i was like yeah where you going i was like um i can't remember if i told him i you know i was telling him like i'm going down south and we began to talk about things like just everything where he he was like oh where are you from so i tell him i'm from new york and he told me oh he went to new york he had to study there and there was different things that he began to speak about and in the conversation I noticed that, you know, like he was saying that like he came, he had like Christians in his family, but um, he believed in God, but then he like, he kind of leaned more on this, like believing in science and different things like that. So I was like, okay, well I believe in God and that's where my fate lies, you know? So this is basically, <laughs> praise God, where I am at. So, <laughs> praise God. Guys, <laughs> this guy, it was, it was, okay, so listen, right? So we, we were talking and stuff. So he's asking me, you know, like, you know, by this time, let me tell you, the sun is coming up. And where we're sitting, the sun is just blasting on me. And I am so weak. I didn't even want to get up. There's like, my body felt so like broken, right? Like this broken. And I could literally feel dehydration. Like I could feel my body drying up, right? It was not a nice feeling, right? Um. So... Praise God, praise God, praise God. So, I try to remember this guy's name. I can't remember his name for nothing. Praise God, but he was a friendly guy. <laughs> praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. Right, so, so he's telling me like, yeah, he came to came to visit, and he had a hotel right over there, and he's been waiting for for so long, and he doesn't know what's going on. The bus um, didn't come at the time, so now he's coming again, and now the bus is still. So I'm telling him what well, the storm kind of messed everything up, you know. Like we're having conversations, and in the conversation, it's like. He knows who God is, but at the same time, he didn't really seem like he was really close to God. Like I said, he spoke about a lot of science, right? He was talking a lot about science and stuff to me. And 
I was really feeling like really parched and so this guy was like oh my gosh doesn't seem like the bus is coming this is a, like around 9 going on to 10 o'clock um, would you want to go back to um, the hotel room with me you could stay with me and we could come back and catch the bus together this is what he's telling me so I did not <laughs> feel safe I don't know you so I was like no I'll stay here and I do not want to be deterred from where I have to go because I realized how the enemy was trying to throw me off so he was like oh my gosh you don't know this area you know people get lost here people you know take people and stuff like that and while he's speaking to me about this 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 pickup truck came with four guys and I was like oh my god what if he's saying what is what if it's true I was like no it's okay I'll stay and then he then in my heart I began to say okay what if God is sending this person to help me and I'm just you know being stubborn because I could be very stubborn and you know I eventually began to say to him um okay okay maybe I'll do, I'll go with you um just to get some rest because now like the sun is so much like I don't want to um I don't want to stay out in the sun and I knew the Lord told me try to stay out of the sun before but there was no way else for me to sit um <clears throat> so I stayed there and so the guy said okay let me go inside and see if I can get um my ticket repurchase my ticket or something like that so I get up when he went walks inside the the gas station area to get the ticket I walked with him and while we were inside there he was like oh do you need something to drink and I was like no I don't need something to drink he was like you need to drink you need to drink something I was like no I'm not going to drink anything I said I don't want anything and he began to get so angry with me and I realized that okay something is going on here and even before like trying to get me to go with him you know he i realized that he was getting like angry because he he realized that I, I kept saying no like i was just so focused on i need to get to where i'm going and and it was afterwards i was like okay maybe i'm being stubborn because i don't want to faint i don't want something to happen and i'm i'm I already not where i need to be you know maybe i should go rest maybe the bus is not coming <laughs> but after he gets angry at me over the drink I walk out and I go back and I sit on the bench and then there's this SUV that pulls up with our entire family inside and then the guy's like oh how long have you been waiting I was like oh well I've been here since 7 8 o'clock no buses have come it's like oh um, I'm picking up someone the bus should be here um, soon and so I wait I think another half an hour and guess what guys the bus came so I turn and I tell the guy I was like oh my god the bus is here I think his name was Trey <clears throat> I was like Trey the bus is here the bus is here so Trey again is angry and I tell you angry like really angry and I was so excited. I, I ran over to the bus. I was like, listen, I got stranded in this bus station. Uh, I, I was told I could come here to get on this bus. I don't know if my bus ticket is going to read. So she took a picture of it and she told me, sit down. And I sat down and Trey came on the bus and I was excited. I was talking to Trey and let me tell you, Trey did not respond to me. Trey did not respond to me after getting on that bus Trey never spoke to me again he was there but he did not speak to me again right so I knew that I had an encounter with the enemy himself and again this person was supposed to derail me from getting to where I was going and it was so funny because I didn't realize um, how intent and how the enemy would press 
right for me to but when he began to get so angry at me i was like okay something is going on here this is something is not right and i felt in my spirit it it is an attack to derail the plan of god you're trying to get me away from the bus stop you're trying to give me stuff to drink that is the enemy right so even though the angel of the lord came to help me and god bless you michael whether you are a man or whether you're an angel god bless you um for doing the that kind thing for me and just the comparison between the two people same neighborhood same accent but different spirit right i know that that was the enemy so listen i was thirsty my throat was dry listen your throat gets so dry your entire body begins to feel like it's drying up i am not kidding with you right i am not kidding i'm telling you the truth um right um praise god so we didn't go to the hotel we went we got happy i was worshiping the lord praise god you know because i i saw it as a victory i saw it as christine didn't give up christine didn't give in you're drying up but you did not drink that water he did not drink that soda he did not take the juice right from either place right so i am excited really happy that i was fulfilling these things for the lord praise god right so it was really interesting to me that trey went from was it trey i don't know we call him trey he went from being this friendly person talking so much to me to being a complete mute not looking in my direction almost as if we never met right and i knew that there was something sinister about him from that moment so we get on this bus and we're going to praise god we're going to another um state state yeah i can't remember the name of this state i can't remember it i don't know if it's charlottesville i can't remember it this 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 particular bus station was very interesting as well so we were on the way to this bus station this other bus station where i had to connect to another bus right <laughs> guys this is tuesday this is tuesday um around midday noon we're driving down the road the bus is filled to capacity because now the bus had to pick up all these people that were stranded left um, because they couldn't get a bus I had nowhere else to go so they had to wait and everybody is like annoyed upset because there's just so much going on because of the storm so we're driving down at this time the, the skies are blue the Sun is out um, of course I'm on the bus I'm trying not to sit I, I made sure not to sit in the Sun and I was also like just really listening to my Bible, um, praise God, my audio Bible, because now it's kind of hard for me to talk. I, I don't want to talk too much because I like my throat is dry. Everything just feels like it's drying up. So I don't want to talk. So I'm listening to the word and I'm worshiping God in my spirit and it just it was just so interesting to me that that guy never spoke to me again right which confirmed that it was the enemy um while we were driving the bus <laughs> satan never gives up he never gives up that bus tire something went wrong with the tire and the bus started sounding really funny so the bus driver pulled into the gas station the people went to use the bathroom like they usually do get their snacks or whatever and she turned around and she said to us this bus is not moving um i don't feel safe driving it it's not moving right now um they're gonna have to send somebody and it's gonna take a couple hours for them to send somebody so some people started getting upset who cursed walked off some people took a uber um this bus 
it was like about 15 to 20 minutes away from where we were going so we were pretty close and uh, praise god hallelujah at this moment the bus began to not work and boy i sat in my seat and i began to pray i began to pray i said lord you start something you're gonna finish it and i sat to bind rebuke pull down strongholds listen to me hallelujah praise god let me tell you something i was so aflamed praise god and <laughs> i was just praying praying because i knew at this time now i knew how i had to fight and the bus driver after the people start carrying on and oh we're trying to get to so and so and we can't get you know that's my trini accent but it's a thousand it's all kind of different accents new york um southerners different people from different places and who cursing and who walk off and who take ubers and like about 20 minutes maybe a half an hour in um she decided she asked everyone um should i take the chance and drive the bus i could do that but if something happened we'll be stranded for sure so they tell her go ahead take the opportunity and because we were all hearing the noise with the with the tire um and we would since we so close she could you know she was saying she could take the chance and drive and we was like okay go ahead do it you know and i was like yes lord yes let you know let her go ahead and do it and i was praying i was like lord keep this wheel keep these tires let us get our destination safe come and protect each and every one of us lord in the name of jesus it was just a whole prayer going down right and <laughs> hallelujah um we got to our destination safe i can't remember if it was charlottesville i think it was and praise god hallelujah i remember coming off of the bus and there was so much police surrounding the area and they were like escorting us into the station and they told us do not leave the train station. Do not leave the bus station um, unless you are going with someone. It is not a safe neighborhood. It is not a safe place. So stay inside, right? So we were not allowed to leave because apparently the neighborhood is very dangerous. You can get robbed. You can get kidnapped. I was like, okay, this is different. Um, the facilities was okay. Could have been better way better than Virginia um, by all accounts um, and of course I go to the bathroom I sat my head freshen up brush my teeth this is now Tuesday and again another ugh, how long maybe four or five hours um, for another bus right I had a whole um, very upsetting moment because I had to speak to the manager and let him know like your bus driver took me here she left me there um, and he was like oh you gotta pay a hundred dollars to get another ticket or something like that I was I started to cry I was like listen I spent the night in a gas station look at me do you think that that was something I wanted to do I had to hop our hop a, a cab trying to get a ride to find this bus station to get to you while sitting down and i can't tell them i'm fasting right but at this time i was just so beyond me and now you want to charge me a hundred dollars to get another ticket i told him i'm not doing it right i'm not doing it yes you have to and he's like the manager and i'm like no i'm not and when I began to cry and tell him, like, all these things that I've been through, like, you are not going to charge me $100. Listen, <laughs> he might like he felt so sorry for me when he heard all these things that I had to do. Um, he said, okay, we'll give you a one-time courtesy. Um, and you would be, um, you wouldn't be charged. We'll just give you a new ticket and it wouldn't be charged, right? So I said, thank you. And I went and I had a seat. 
you know, so after I freshen up, and let me tell you, this guy, Trey, never spoke to me again. Never, even in the bus station. He didn't look at me. He didn't talk to me. Nothing. And he was so kind at, the, at first, right? That's still, I, I can't believe. Let me tell you, sometimes you can be so fooled by the people that you are surrounded by. <laughs> anyway, I... I sat there again having to sit in the midst of people eating, drinking, some people cursing, who's getting upset with who. Um, at that time I remember I was on YouTube very briefly because I was trying not to take in too much content but there was a word that came over that the Lord used also to encourage me and uh, he was talking about a blessing being stolen. Um, she was actually, she was talking about a blessing being stolen and the dream that she had and what God interpreted, interpreted it to mean. And uh, praise God. When I saw the dream, it just confirmed to me, Kristen, the enemy is trying to rob you of the reward that God has for you. Um, don't allow him to do that and I was just even more driven to really push my heels in and keep it there until I was complete so praise God I sat there I began to listen to the word of God and just feed in my spirit you know as you fast you have to feed your spirit you don't fast and watch TV you don't fast and stay on the phone and talk you don't fast and, and do what you, all your business. No. Fasting is a time for you and God to connect. It's not always where you say a lot. Sometimes you don't even have to say a lot. You just fast and you, you're letting him know, Lord, this fast is for you. Lord, this is just for us to become closer. I want to know you. Um, and then you feed your spirit with the things of God, the word of God right you might even want to listen to like different sermons on topics that is pertaining to you specifically topics that you know your weak areas and the areas you need strengthening you know you, you may not like fasting so you will listen to sermons on fasting you know and um or you will you, you might need strengthening in a weak area um so you would listen to um different Praise God. Different um, sermons that would pertain to that topic that you need strengthening in or you need a little more uplifting in. Or if you don't want to listen to anyone, you can look in the Bible where they talk about specific topics and read those words. It's always good where God could lead you to a particular book in the Bible that he wants you to read. But sometimes you may not always be able to hear from God in the way that you should. Um, so choose wisely in um, knowing what you need. All right. I, I know that I may not be committed to God in a way that I need to be committed to him. Okay. What book in the Bible talks about being committed to God? Okay. My belief I'm not believing in God as I should. Okay, what book in the Bible is um, talking more about belief and believing in God and faith? You know, you look for those books and allow those truths to go into your spirit while you fast. It's a good time to feed your spirit. All right? Okay, so back to my story. So I waited there. I even saw Trey got on a, <laughs> got on a bus some hours before me and he was gone and you know honestly I just feel like he seemed to disappear and, you know the way he left it was just really really everything about him was just really disturbing praise God so we're on Tuesday afternoon and <laughs> I still am on this journey and uh, praise God praise God so a couple hours pass and then our bus arrives. So like all the people that's on my bus, they're excited and happy because now they get to go. I think I still had like two more transfers that I needed to go on and would be at my destination. I 
tried to rest as much as I could. I tried to sleep as much as I could. Of course, you're surrounded by people, so that's difficult, right? But I just felt that the rest of my journey um, was smooth in terms of um, I still had to up and down. I still was very weak at this time, even more weak. Um, because it's Tuesday, but because I was sleeping and resting so much, I was able to um, maintain some sense of, uh, you know, keeping my strength up. And then the word of God was also empowering me as I was moving and doing, but mostly resting because you have to sit for a lot of hours. I knew at this time that I had pass the test in terms of those temptations to forfeit uh, what God was asking me to do. I knew I had passed the test. I could feel the presence of the Lord just beaming on me and saying, I'm proud of you. You didn't, you didn't give in. You didn't give up. You know, you wanted to. And God encouraged me to, to keep going. That's another where you can know that God has given you the unction to do what he's telling you to do is that when you're at your lowest point, he would just do something to lift you right back up so that you will continue to do the assignment or that, that thing, instruction that he has given you to do, right? All right, so another how many hours, praise God, hallelujah another how many hours oh a lot of hours so we had two more transfers i can't remember the different stuff that i took um but i know that there was two more transfers in between to where i was going um praise god hallelujah praise god praise god praise god praise god praise god <laughs> Praise God. So, two more transfers to where I was going. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your spirit, Lord. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay, so two more transfers to where I was going. And when I get to my destination, I think it was Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday afternoon right so the lord told me when i got off the bus he said okay i want you to go to a nearby hotel get a room right and before i got got there he told me i want you to go buy a bottle of olive oil all right buy a bottle of olive oil now at this time i haven't showered since sunday right so trust me when I say I know what it's like, <laughs> sadly to say, but all in the name of Jesus, I know what it's like to live on the streets and have nowhere to go and have not the things that you need to have and a shower. Oh, I cannot imagine like those who know me, I cannot sleep without showering. So that was crazy right um but back to what i was saying I, I started buying up stuff that i needed i bought stuff to shower i bought brush comb because i haven't like been able to take care of myself for all these days and one of the most important things the lord told me get a bottle of olive oil right because i was sent there to do a specific task praise god Hallelujah. So I got all these things and then I went to a hotel that was close to where I was. And I immediately showered. It was the a most amazing feeling. I don't know if you know. And I was able to rest. Lay down on the bed and rest. In laying down, not sitting. You know? Um so that was amazing to just wash up, shower, <laughs> bathe, comb my hair. So 
I was really happy that I could do that and I rested and then the Lord had more instructions he's like Kristen I want you to give your friend a call because I was in a town of one of my friends he said and this is the person I want you to call him and tell him to come um, the Lord sent me to anoint you um, for whatever purpose it is and I am here and uh, I'm here to anoint you you need to come as soon as you can and uh, the Lord told me um, to do this at a specific time he told me to do it at 8 p.m. Um, in, in the night in the in the night yeah it was night because I got there the afternoon and then I showered and I rested and while I was like just spending time with him you know just loving on the Lord he began to tell me this is what I want you to do um and then he told me after you anoint him I want you to break your fast so this is where I had a big problem I was like what break my fast I was like, this is a devil. <laughs> and he said, no, Kristen, I want you to break your fast. And I didn't want to. I didn't want to break my fast. And I, me and the Lord had a, <laughs> a little bit of a tussle. Because I was like, Lord, tomorrow morning I'm going to be all done. I could rest and then I'll be over. Listen, you don't know what God knows. Just listen to him and obey. Right? He told me to break my fast after I anointed him. So let me tell you, I uh, after I rested, I finally decided, okay, I'm going to just listen to the Lord. You know he has led you this far. He's not going to lead you astray. So I wasn't happy about it, but I had done some research while I was there. And, you know, having not eaten for so long, food or water I didn't really want to like do too much heavy so I did like a, a broth a light broth um, I didn't even want the stuff that was in it because I was too afraid um, to eat and I had I think orange juice and uh, right so I bought those things and I kept them I kept them there I think I bought uh, popcorn too I'm not sure um, but I, I had I bought those things and I kept them there, right? I think those were the things because I remember. No, I think I went back out and picked them up because he told me, right, to do it after I got there, after I showered and stuff like that. And listen, I was so committed. I didn't even let my face get wet because um, I didn't want to drink water. You know, when you drink, your face getting wet, you drink water. I didn't even want my face to get wet. Right, so I use a thing and wipe my face, right? I call my friend and I call my friend and he is like, okay, I'll come right away. And I think maybe like a half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour, he came. And when he came in, I was like, listen, the Lord sent me here. He, did, he had no idea I was coming. <laughs> he had no idea the trouble it took me to get there. And to be honest, I said to myself, what kind of man is this that I would have to go through such demonic oppression, demonic warfare, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, just to uh, complete this assignment? It was, <laughs> it was something else, right? The enemy tried his best. And let me tell you, he really did. He did. Um, so the Lord sent me here and he sent me to anoint you. I have been fasting for the last two days. And uh, praise God, I am here to anoint you. I bought this bottle of oil. It was like about uh, this big, like about this big, right? And he, my, the instruction was, I want you to pour it out on him. Yes. Yeah, so before he came, I was praying over this oil, asking the Lord to anoint it. And... Uh, Praise God. When he got there, I told him what the Lord had asked me to do. And 
still to this time it's like what kind of man is this that all this trouble i say you must be something special for god because the enemy he fighting for you he's fighting to keep you um so i got there when he you know so i told him i was like okay this is i'm gonna pour this bottle of oil out on you so you you got you need to attire yourself um to do such if you don't want it to get on your clothes and um he of course whatever he didn't want get to get oil on and in the name of the father son and holy spirit i anointed him i don't know what it was for but I did my duty, I did my part, right? And it's grateful to God for the opportunity to serve him in doing um, what he asked me to do, right? So on this note, I'm gonna stop right here because the Lord told me I want you to stop right here, right at this anointing, right? And praise God, I want you to leave it right there because there is more to my story so there's going to be another part i want to wait on god to see when he would want me to release the rest of it all right so he was anointed and he is anointed by god and i'm not going to say his name and i'm also not going to say specifically where he he lives right but this is what god asked me to do um, there was, praise God, warfare coming and there was also warfare leaving. Listen to me, the encounters that I've had, <laughs> it is beyond words and I'm be happy, very happy to share them with you as long as the Lord gives me, um, he allows me to, right? So part three will be coming there may be a part four i'm not sure but this was the bulk of my journey um and half of it actually there's another half that has not been told and i will wait on the lord to see but he told me he wants me to stop right here and i will be sharing the rest of it with you in time to come and the Lord is going to give me um, his timing and I always want to do it in his timing because I love the Lord so much um, but there's more to share um, more of the anointing more of his power that has rested upon me in such a mighty way and I said to you I would never be the same again hallelujah i can only uh go higher and higher in him praise god but I, I i rest assured that after this fast was over um praise god and i've heard people say this to me and i myself in in time of prayer and fasting i have seen praise god there was the, the lord told me there is a crown people cannot see it in the natural but in the spiritual, you have been crowned. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, even while we live on earth, God crowns us with spiritual things, right? He crowns us with spiritual things. And when we are willing to go the mile, the extra mile, let me tell you, there are things that you unlock. Hallelujah. Things that you unlock demonic realms listen to me that have to go under your feet when you begin to speak because god has given you the authority that you have unlocked with your obedience right i want to say this to you praise god whatever god is telling you to do do it because you will only reap the benefits you will only reap the benefits Hallelujah. I want to explain more of the things that I experienced, but I'll have to do it in another video. This is already way too long. I hope you guys are uh, as I, uh, I hope you guys are as excited as I am to hear this 
next part and the other two parts to come, you, I'm sure, will be very blown away. Um, and by the next part, I'm sure you would be even more excited to know how it even ended in Jesus' name. So I'm going to stop right here. This is Kristen coming to you again from Chronicles of a Christian Girl. I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I did. I was just so happy to share with you finally because nobody really knew what I have had to go through with God. But he said to me, now is the time for them to know. Praise God. And many more blessings to come praise, praise god. god as christian coming to you again from chronicles of a christian girl be blessed until another time amen